Hello, this is Georgi and today I'm going to present to you our program for uh, ARP poisoning and DNS spoofing. So let's start off with the scan network feature. So let's put in, in an IP. Let's say 0 and let's define the range, say 24. And if we hit scan network, it's going to scan network and show us the online hosts. So we can see these are all the hosts that are online. Okay, um, also this has a built-in tool for um, checking if the IP range is correct. So let's say if I put another dot in, it says the inputs are incorrect, please use IPv4 CMDR mutation. Okay, let's proceed to the start of the poisoning attack. Okay, so let's say the victim IP we choose to be 192.168.56.101. Okay, one more two. 168.56.101 and the IP to spoof will be the M2 the Debian server. So 192.168.56.102. Okay, so let's start the ARP poisoning attack and we can see that it's successful. Okay, so let's check if that worked. Let's go to M1. Remove that and that as well. Okay, so let's say let's check the ARP tables, and we can see that M2 and both M3 point to the same physical address, which means that the ARP poisoning worked. Okay, let's proceed to the other tools. So for the ARP poisoning, we have two other tools, which are the brute force ARP poisoning and the stealth uh, ARP poisoning. And pretty much the brute force is self-explanatory. So we, we basically poison every uh, host's uh, DNS so that it, uh, every host's ARP, so that it, holds to, it uh, points to our IP. And the stealth ARP poisoning uh, works a little bit different. It um, basically waits for a um, for an ARP request that is um, searching for a certain um, physical address of an IP, and then it uh, responds with an ARP request. It's not uh, it's not actively searching for it, but only response, so it's a little bit harder to detect. Okay, so let's proceed to the DNS spoofing attack. Um, Okay, so uh, what we have made so far is, um, let me actually show you. So let's type in the victim's IP. And the author's IP. Okay, let's start the DNS spoofing attack. Okay, and as we can see so far, uh, we only have that. We have poisoned the victim's ARP and we have poisoned the router's ARP. And the connection between the router and the victim has been jammed. What does that mean? Well, that means that basically every one second, as you can see here, just one second, please. Okay, that's not working. Uh, let me start it up again. It's bugged out. Okay, so as we can see here, every second or every two seconds, it sends an ARP to an um, ARP packet to the victim and to the router, and it tells them that we are the other one. And um, this basically jumps the connection between the two. And also, if we now go to M1 and try to access M2's website. 
Okay, so if we now go to M1 and open Internet Explorer with the DNS attack running, uh, we can see it running over here. Uh, we can see in Wireshark that packages are constantly being sent. And we go to M1 and we type in Entus web page, we can find it. And also, if we go to the uh, command swap and change the API tables, we can see that still both of the addresses are pointing to M3 um, physical address, which means that we can basically observe all of the traffic that's going between M2 and M and M1 from M3. And here, over here, um, we can actually see when the request to the website was made and we can see that it's being redirected. That's because we have um, port forwarding, uh, I mean, uh, IP forwarding open. Uh, so we could not uh, finish the uh, DNS spoofing attack um, because we could not set up um, M2 to be a DNS server. And uh, this um, concludes the video of our program. I hope you enjoyed it and have a nice day. Thank you.